How many trophies is Saul Nige going to bring to Old Trafford? Hello guys, this is the What If League and today uh, we are doing part 2 of the experiment What if Manchester United signed Saul Nige from Atletico Madrid? If you, uh, if you have seen part 1 then you will know what happened uh, in the previous uh, 3 years and a half uh, What I did in the beginning of the experiment was to transfer Saul in the middle of February which is quite unfortunate because he was not able to play in the Premier League until the end of the first season but in any case I fast forwarded then until the end of season 2017-18 and then three more years until, uh, the ju until June 2021 Now uh, at that period uh, Manchester United were quite successful so were Atletico Madrid to be honest so um, apparently they spent the money that they received for so quite, uh, quite well and now in this episode 2 I have fast forwarded another 3 more years into the future and we find ourselves at the 2nd of June 2024 and we are going to see what happened now whether Saul was a big success at Old Trafford and uh, how is he performing in his new team so first of all you can see already on the screen his stats and uh, his value he's valued at 61 million which is a very good uh, result for him he's performing quite well now let's see Manchester United screen Jose Mourinho is uh, still their manager, captain is Paulo Dybala, if you remember Dybala was uh, brought from Juventus in the first part of this uh, experiment So U is now the vice captain however and this is a very interesting turn of events So U who has uh, very good stats and uh, you can see teamwork is 13, his leadership is 15 so he is suitable for a captain, no, no wonder that he has been selected by Mourinho to, uh, to be the uh, second choice there now let's have a quick look at the Premier League and what is happening with Manchester United's performance there So a quick recap, in the first episode Manchester United won two titles and then uh, surrendered the last season title to Chelsea uh, They were on par on points for 84 both teams but Chelsea had better goal difference Now in the next season Manchester United reclaimed the title with 88 points which was 5 more than second place City Chelsea and Liverpool completed the top 4 in the next season, which is uh, year 22-23, we have Manchester City claiming uh, the trophy in the Premier League. They are 10 points above second place Manchester United, who were on par with Chelsea with 79 points each, but they had better goal difference. Liverpool is completing the top four. And in the last season of uh, this um, part two, Liverpool are surprising champions, surprising at least to me. Apologies to all Liverpool fans, didn't mean to offend. They have accumulated 89 points, which is 3 more than 2nd place Manchester City and 5 more than 3rd place Manchester United. Chelsea find themselves in 4th position and complete the top 4. Now quickly going to Manchester United's uh, tactics screen to see how are they playing. They have Lukaku up front, Musson down the left, Correa uh, in the number 10 position and uh, they have Mauro Tassi as the right winger. So Mauro Tassi is a regen player, Argentinian, 22 year old, you can see very very impressive regen he has been brought from where? from, uh, from Lanus okay, so a very, uh, he was brought as a very young player and then he developed on loan we also have Piotr Zielinski in the middle, he's partnering Paul Pogba so who is in the substitutes, at least in this screen, this is not necessarily the starting 11 of course let's see how did Saul perform in the last 3 seasons he played a lot of games, so apparently he is the starter. Although he was not, he was not um, cement. He has not cemented his place, and I'm sure that, for example, Paul Pogba has played more games than him. In his fourth season, uh, for fourth full season at United, he performed uh, not not very well. Six point eighty eight average rating, and uh, after that, he managed to kick kick on and improve a bit. But overall. To be honest, I would have expected a bit more uh, as soon as so settled in uh, in the Manchester United squad. Also, of course, we need to consider that his position is not uh, one of those where you would see players shine a lot. He is uh, one of uh, the, uh, the the workhorses of the team. He is playing uh, in the middle of the field probably. Uh, a lot of the times he's playing as a defensive midfielder, so he has a lot of defensive duties and usually that leads to lower average ratings I rarely see players that play in this position to have very high average ratings and to be one of the brightest stars in the game 
if you if you um, if you saw in the beginning, he is classed as world class midfielder. So uh, this means that he is valued a lot in the game, and uh, we shouldn't be too harsh when we look at his average ratings. Now I'm also interested to see the transfers for Manchester United in these past three seasons. So let's start with the last one. So Mauro Tassi was brought uh, in the uh, last season of the previous episode on the 9th of June. Then uh, what happened afterwards? Let's see. Jose Antonio Ugalde was brought from Copa America. Arthur Masuaco from Atalanta. Arthur Masuaco is a player of West Ham in reality, so he was sold out in Italy and then brought back to England. Paul Taylor from Birmingham. Jeremy Frimpong. Jeremy Frimpong, if I'm not mistaken, this is a player that started his career in Arsenal. No, Manchester City. All right. Didn't know that. He's now playing for Yaleville, so he did not develop very well. And looking at his stats, I, I'm very, very surprised that Manchester United bought him in the first place. Christian Kurka from Red Bull Salzburg, Piotr Zelinski from Napoli, and Didier Cardenas or Cardenas from what is that? Independiente Santa Fe. I'm not familiar with that uh, with that uh, club. Then in the sold section, Tyson was sold to Lazio. Timothy Fosomensa was loaned out to Bournemouth. Milan Bars was loaned out to PSV. Carol Darlow was sold to Aston Villa. Carol Darlow was brought previously. And he was the substitute goalkeeper. Then uh, he was sold to Aston Villa for uh, a good profit. Now let's see what happened next season. Vukasin Jovanovic from Lyon was brought. A very big transfer. This one, 41 million. He is a central defender. And unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be one of the regular players in the last season, although the previous one he played quite a lot of games, so good performance from Jovanovic. Gianluca Mancini from Atalanta has been brought as well, so he is another central defender, he has been sold uh, in the meanwhile to Monaco, we will see what happened there. He was brought for 12 million, we will see how much they got for him on the way out. Simone Verdi from Bologna, Simone Verdi is uh, a number 10. He's still at Manchester United. He's on loan at Inter, however, so apparently he did not fit in very well as well. Andre Hovart, a regen, left fullback. He is still at the team. Determination 20, so this guy is probably going to become a beast of a player. We'll see. If I do a, a part 3 of this episode, we're going to see what happens with Sander Hovart. Benjamin Henriks from Leverkusen. So this is interesting, a right fullback. He is a very good player. And we see that he is the starting right fullback for Manchester United at the moment. In the out outgoing section, Axel Tuanzeb has been sold to Watford for 9.75 million. This is very interesting. I usually see Tuanzeb developing uh, very well in United. At United, apologies, but uh, this is not the case. Tahit Chong has been sold to Feyenoord for a very cheap sum, 2.5 million. Nemanja Matic played out his, his career at uh, Al Hilal in uh, the Arabian Leagues. Then we see Angel Gomes has been uh, released on a free to West Brom. Very, very interesting turn of events. Angel Gomes is one of the brightest talents of the Manchester United Academy and uh, he did not perform very well, apparently. Then we, when, then we see what, what else we have here. Artur Maswako was sold to Spartak Moscow. And let's see the last season. Charlie Musonda was brought from Arsenal. Alexandro from Juventus. Uh, Zivoljin Djordjevic from Red Star. Is this a region? Yes, it's a region. A striker. 21-year-old Serbian. Very good stats. He's probably going to develop into quite the player as well. Nadiem Amiri from Hoffenheim. He is uh, a number 10. Also capable to play on the wing. On, the, on either wings as a striker and uh, in midfield, so a very versatile player. Maxi Gonzalez from Everton and Stefan Savic from Red Bull Leipzig. Okay, Anthony Martial was uh, sold to Newcastle for a very low sum, in my opinion, 36.5. I've seen Martial playing for Real Madrid, PSG. Apparently, he did not develop. Oh, his value at 47.5, so he has uh, increased his value significantly since at Newcastle. Nobody is interested in him at the moment. That's a very interesting turn of events. If I remember uh, to, to have a look in part 3 of this experiment, I'll definitely be interested to see what happens. Then Marcus Rashford was also sold to West Ham, 22.5 million. So 
Mourinho sold two of his brightest stars for uh, for not that big of not that not that much not not that much money. Very very odd for me. Rashford has also increased his value while at West Ham. Let's see if somebody is interested. No. Okay. And Cesar Montes has been sold to a Chinese team. So very very interesting um, transfers here we see um, at Manchester United. Uh, Martial and Rashford has been so have been sold both of them, and there is a complete new set of attacking players currently playing at Old Trafford, being led by Paulo Dybala and uh, Romelu Lukaku. Next off, I want to see what happened in the English Cup competitions before we move on to the European competitions and we end this uh, second episode of the experiment. So the FA Cup has been won by Manchester City three times in the last four years. So in the last three, which we are covering in this part two of the experiment, Manchester City, Chelsea and Manchester City again were victorious. No titles for Manchester United there. Let's see if there was something interesting in the League Cup. Manchester United won the first League Cup uh, of this three-year period, then Manchester City uh, got the second title and Everton were victorious in the last edition. Next, uh, our focus is changing to the Euro European competitions and first off we have the Europa League. Just as a reminder, the last uh, Europa League was won by Tottenham. Then in the next year Barcelona took the second most important European competition after defeating Dortmund in the final. In the year after that, Atletico Madrid won the Europa League after 2-0 against Lazio. And in the final season, we had an all-London final uh, when Arsenal defeated Tottenham in 1-0 uh, in, uh, in the final play played at Ernst Happel Stadion. Moving up to the Champions League, and as a reminder, Manchester United won the last edition of the Champions League in season 2020-21. Uh, this was uh, the last year of part 1 of this experiment. Then in the next year, Monaco were victorious after defeating Chelsea in the final 1-0. Chelsea qualified for that uh, final after beating Manchester United in the semis. Monaco, on the other hand, qualified after defeating Milan, Real Madrid and Lazio on their way to, to this uh, trophy victorious game. Season afterwards, Real Madrid defeated Manchester City in the final. Real Madrid qualified after beating Juventus, Monaco and Bayern Munich on their way to this final. Manchester City defeated Manchester United, Liverpool and Sevilla. And in the final season, we had an All Madrid final where Atletico Madrid were victorious, beating their uh, city neighbours Real Madrid 2-0. So Atletico Madrid won the Europa League the previous season and now they have won the Champions League. If you see uh, the overview of the Champions League, you're going to see that Atletico Madrid are very, very successful. They have three titles in the last seven years, the same number as Real Madrid. So apparently Atletico Madrid spent the money that they got uh, from, the tr from the transfer of Saul Nigue to Manchester United. They spent them very well and are very successful in this period. The final thing that I want to do before I finish this part two of the experiment is to check the Ballon d'Or winners for the last three years. You can see we have Eden Hazard. Winning the first one with Belotti second place and Lemar in the third place. Then we have Neymar winning uh, the award in 2022 with Lemar second, Bappé third. Usman Dembele from Barcelona has won the last uh, Ballon d'Or award. Just above Marco Verratti and Neymar both playing for Paris Saint-Germain. Alright, that's it for this video guys. If you haven't seen part 1 of this experiment, please uh, make sure to do so. The link will be provided in the description below and you can also find it in the videos uh, in my channel. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, that way you're going to receive notifications for when I upload new videos. In the meantime, you can also check out my social media, links will be listed in the description below. Let me know what do you guys think about this experiment and what would you like to see next. I would love to hear more from you in the comments. Once again, thank you for watching. Until the next time, bye!